community is so great in High Rocks, and that's one of the biggest things that attracted it attracted me to it after my first race. But um, the head judge Yusef, he was my judge in Maastricht, so he's from New York, so we've become pals, like in a you know in a sense, and like same with just all the High Rocks people, and and they're all there, like you know, rallying for me, and that means so much, but it also helps so much. Good day, everyone. Welcome back to this feed. We are so excited to bring you a brand new show called The Hybrid Happy Hour with Meg Jacoby. That's right. She is going to be interviewing some of your favorite hybrid athletes. We're going to get into training. We're going to get into mindset. We're going to get into gear. We're going to get into some fun. It's going to be good times. But we thought we'd present this, introduce this to you by just getting Meg on the horn talking about her world record breaking performance. First woman under 60 in High Rocks. Away we go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to what we're going to call the Hybrid Happy Hour. Yeah. With Meg, with Meg Jacoby. It wasn't that long ago that your friend said, got to watch out for my buddy, Meg Jacoby. And then you won an event or you, I think you came in second because you missed a lap. And it was like, who's, yeah. Meg, Jac who's Meg Jacoby, right? Who, who yeah. is this gal? Who's Meg Jacoby? Yeah. Clearly, everybody knows who you are now. You had the world record, lost it, broke it again. You now have the doubles record with yeah. Michaela. Okay. Yeah. How buff is that lady? Super buff. Super buff. <laughs> I think I'm like, I'm like, I'm pretty buff, you know? And then I stand next to her and I'm like, holy, I gotta lift the weights up more. Like, this is crazy. Yeah. She's so, uh So you work with uh with Rich Ryan, reinforced running Rich, uh great man with a horrible Instagram name. And uh <laughs> talk to me about what you and coach go into for this race. What was the what was the plan? Was it sub 60 this time or was it hey let's just put down a good time before worlds what was the plan yeah going into this it, race? Was, it was definitely like a a tune-up was the plan and of course I always have a goal in mind because you know I I you know as you said I had the record and I lost the record and you know I liked having the record I really enjoyed having it so I was like all right I want to get close close to 60 as possible um and really the goal for me was to get another race under my belt. I've only done four before this one individual this year and two were on the grid. Um, so, you know, so you're not like running around wondering. Can you where explain, can you, can you explain people what that means on the grid? Yeah. So the grid in the championship races, it's all, basically all the stations are done in just one specific area. So the, you're assigned a judge and they swap out all the equipment while you're on the running basically. And then, you know, you just, so you just keep coming to the same exact spot. So there's not that looking up and trying to find the, the arch for whatever station is next. You're just coming in the, in you're going directly to the same spot. And it's really meant for the spectators because it makes it easier for them. Um, and then it's, it's nice in a sense because you're all you're all pretty much next to each other. Um, so at, in the competition sense, as things go on, people start separating and then you're on all these different stations on the grid, especially for the spectators, like they don't have to leave. They just watch. So if you're cheering for me or you're cheering for Tara or Alondra or whoever, even if we're separated by time in the field, we're all going to still be in the same area. So. Um, the challenge with that though, as I think we all know, is that on things like lunges and burpees and farmers, where we normally have these long straightaways, we're going back and forth, you know, eight, 10 times. And that just adds time and, you know, makes it a little bit different. So that's the grid. So does it, and yeah, we love it, right? Because you can always you can always scream when your person comes around, and then when it is close, it's even better, right? Everything except the yeah. wall balls. The wall balls happen over at the wall, wall balls. Um, but if even if you know if Chris or whoever has lost the 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 leader, 
when Chris comes in, we can still scream for her because she's right in front of us. We don't have to move. Um, right. So what you're saying, again, I just always want to break this down as much as possible uh, to folks. Um, cause for someone like me, it takes a couple of times. It's like, wait a minute, why is it, why does it take longer? So instead of just going and just running, you're going yeah. down and back multiple times. Turning around. So it's the transition time you lose. Does it typically produce faster running times though? Um, not, not so much. I think it more just depends on how many laps it is. So I think that's the biggest thing that helps with the running times. If you have long straightaways, that makes a difference. You're not turning as much. That makes a difference. All those little things. Right. So you're saying, let's put down a good time before Worlds. Um, yeah. w- w- do you guys run first thing in the morning? Yeah. So I was at like 920, which was the earliest I've ever done a high rocks before. So. so you don't have any concept of, oh, we think this is a fast course or anything like that, no. right? No, and it was all doubles going on. And um, so with that being said, like the first half of the race, I was – bobbing and weaving a lot so I was a little nervous because I was like oh you know um like you know when you do that you're slowing down you're accelerating you're speeding up you're you're going way around you're you're not you're not on that like nice direct line so I wasn't really positive if it was going to happen just because of that like I felt great but you know you just don't know how much time is gonna that's gonna suck up so but Ultimately, my plan, like Rich and I had kind of discussed a different type of race strategy for me this time, and I feel like I just really stuck to it and and executed, and it just went very well. So, Are, are you allowed to reveal said strategy? Yeah, just I think um, running is my strength. I think that's kind of comes as no surprise with my background I think that's what I feel the most confident doing in this space so my goal was to be very wise on my early station work and push my runs as much as I could so my run splits were almost the exact same time every single time um so that was really really good having which were which was what what were your run splits they were right around like 346, 347. So, um, so being able to be really consistent in the running after all of the the various stations, because usually it's like, you know, maybe your run after sled push is a little not as fat or or whatever the case may be. Um, so being able to pull that all in was was big for me and I feel like a lot of my stations were actually really strong even though I felt like I was intentionally being smart if that makes sense what does that what does that mean for you like I wasn't like when I got to the sled push I was purposely not trying to hammer it as hard as I could um because I remained really calm, I feel like that actually ended up producing a very good time, even though like the time wasn't my goal. You know what I mean? If that makes any sense. So, yeah. And I think when that time happened, everyone, including my first thought is, all right, well, this is a super fast course, but guess what? The men didn't break any records. So so I think, I think it, I think it shows what a outstanding performance you had. Thank you. Um, Ryan Kent actually said that to me after, and that was really, really, really nice to hear. He's someone I obviously really respect and he and Rich are buds and they, they do their little banter on Instagram that I love. So he said, you know, when I saw your time, Meg, I thought like, holy sh, I'm going to run like a 55. Um, and then, you know, that didn't happen for him. He still ran a great race, but then after he was like, course wasn't fast Meg like you're just fast and that just felt very very good and I the course was conducive to have a good time in a sense that the the runs were we had long straightaways that's great as you know it, it really kind of felt like a track almost where um you know you had these real long nice straights your turns were not very long so then you're back onto the straights but it's not like they were, they weren't short, you know what I mean? They were certainly the correct distance. 
So, yeah. So, so I wh- guess I'm fit. Thanks, Rich. You you definitely are fit. So tell me where mm-hmm. where was the record made? What stations did you have your best day on? So my row went really well. Um, well, actually, my sleds were were solid. My row went really well. And Rich is big on the if your row goes well or it feels decent, you know you're having a good race. So I remember having that quote of his popping up as I'm sitting on the rower because I was, you know, right around like 155 average per 500. And that's right around where I want to be. So I'm like, all right, this is going well. Um, my lunch time was like the fastest I'd ever done them in. And then my run after the lunges is usually my worst run. And it, it was like 346. So, um, and then wall balls, you know, the wall, the, the unbroken wall balls at the end. So the the last like two, three stations are usually really strong for me. I feel very confident in those stations. So, um, it helped knowing and hearing everyone say like, she's ahead or she's on pace. And I'm looking at my watch and I, you know, you go through the worst case, you're like, all right, worst case scenario. If this is a five minute run here on this last run, I still have four minutes to do wall balls, which, you know, I'm usually in the low three minutes. So I'm like, I can still get it. Like it's, it's just funny how your, your mind starts working like that. Was the plan as soon as you got there, I'm going unbroken? Yeah, absolutely. And and you almost like, even if you felt like you couldn't, the adrenaline of the crowd and everyone cheering for you. And of course, E-Rock on the mic and coach and everybody being right there. It was awesome because I think the community is so great in High Rocks. And that's one of the biggest things that attracted it attracted me to it after my first race but um the head judge Youssef he was my judge in Maastricht so he's from New York so we've become pals like in a you know in a sense and like same with just all the High Rocks people and and they're all there like you know rallying for me and that means so much but it also helps so much um I had butterflies in my like I, I don't even know what I was doing. I, like, I'm just like going through the motions. Cause I, I, I like blacked out kind of like, like left I, your body. You left your body. Yeah. Like literally it, it's just the craziest feeling. I'm like, where am I right now? Like, I don't even know what's going on, you know? So, um, yeah, but like, you kind of don't even have a choice because it's just like, you're just, you're just going, you know? Uh, yeah and like every time I went behind the stage where coach uh the DJ is he's like here she comes behind the stage like every time so like you really it, it just it really does help you know and and they're they're like banter back and forth I a lot of the time I like tune things out but I just I was so I was so interested because um and I kind of like got on Graham about this it's like you guys gotta let me know I'm ahead. Like, I didn't even know, like, I'm looking down. I'm like, I think I'm, I think I got it. Like, I don't. So of course in the live feed, um, you know, people are like, Oh, she, you know, this is where so-and-so was. This is where like Meg's out and they're going over the times, but like, no one is relaying that to me. So I'm like kind of blind. I think, um, in the video, I, I just watched the rewatch the end. Um, and I cross the finish line and I'm just like staring at, like, I, I'm like, okay, cool. I won, but I'm staring at, I, I'm like, what's the time? Like, I had no idea. So, and then you see like how like emotional I got because one fine, you know, your name pops up on the little board on the side and it has all the times people cross. It's not a little um, board. It's a pretty big board. Yeah. Well, okay. Fair. But it takes a second for it to like register. So I'm like, yeah, where is it? You know, like, um, so, cause I didn't know how much I was, you know, they kept saying like, she's going to go under an hour, but I had no idea how far, like where I was. I was like, is it one second or a minute? Like, that's a big difference, you know? (laughs) So, 
<laughs> like how fast do I need to do these last 10 wall balls? You know what I mean? So, right. Well, I do. I have this, I have this slight thing where I, I have a pet peeve about the cameraman coaching runners. So he shouldn't tell you, but somebody should maybe, you know, a friend can yell to okay. you or whatever. I guess that's fair. I don't, I don't want to give an unfair advantage to whoever's not right next to the cameraman. That's always my, it's always my that's thought. A good, that's a good point. That's a good point. I guess. So how was wake? What was waking up Sunday like? What was your first thought as you looked up at the sky? Yeah, it was like it was very. Uh, I was at the venue the entire day Saturday. Like, got there at seven forty five, and I I didn't end up leaving, which was not my plan. I thought I'd go shower, come back, watch the watch the men. But um, you know, like I said, the community is so awesome, and it was just tons of support, lots of talking, lots of kissing babies. I love children. So anytime I'm talking to someone with a child, I get very distracted. Um, uh, so it was like, like I, it didn't almost fully register cause you're just like there and you're just like, yeah, awesome. Like, how do you do? And you're just talking with people all day. And then, um, you know, I finally left and I, I went like back to the hotel and I just laid in my bed and I was like, holy shit. Like I just did that. Like what? Um, and I felt great. Like this was the first. Okay. Let me preface this in saying you never feel great during the high rocks, but this was the best I had ever felt performing a high rocks. Like I don't feel like I had any moment, like I've had those moments in the middle of the race where you're like, holy shit, this sucks. You know, like I feel terrible or, or whatever. And, um, I really felt really, really good. And I felt good after, and that's not, that's also not typical. Usually I'm falling on the stage and laying there for a while. And, um, no, I just, I felt really good and I still feel really good. I've actually, this is the best I've ever recovered after. So yeah, it was cool. And then, you know, hopped on my plane back to the East coast yesterday, got home at like one in the morning. So you know how that goes. I, I, I do know how that goes. Yep. How many DMS did you have and text did you have? Oh my God, a lot. It was, and I try to answer every single one or like, or say thank you because I really am so genuinely grateful for every, I know people are stopping and taking time to like, congratulate me or posting a story and um and it means a lot you know so I try to answer every single one and it was a lot so if I didn't answer you and you watched I'm sorry but no I no I care L listen this doesn't mean everything but High Rocks Daily did a joint post with me on ORM and it's almost 3,000 likes and I just gotta say I that's not that's pretty effing huge even between two accounts that's pretty amazing um, when it when it hit almost two, I was like, wow, a lot. Of, I mean, it's so, you know, uh, that's just awesome, dude. Uh, first one to go right. sub 60. That's just it's just awesome. So it, and it's 58, 58. Um, yeah. Numerical. So, look at that. Let's like go. I and uh, and, you know, selfishly, uh, myopically, USA, USA. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I did the math really quick after Bell. I'm like standing on stage and I'm like, me, Lauren, Alondra, Tara, Vivian, Chris, Bell. And I'm like, holy shit, there's seven out of the 15 are US women going to the world championship. And I just, I feel like that is so cool and awesome. And I genuinely look at these ladies like my teammates. I'm like, it's team USA. It's the Olympics. Like, let's, let's do this shit. You know? So I, I was super, super happy. Bell ran a fam, fantastic race. You called it. You were calling it last week on, on the Instagram. Like, can Bell get in? Like she can, if she does this. And I, that was so awesome seeing her, um, her really like rise to that occasion. Um, I mean, her time is like, now one of the faster times so well as you know we are building a hybrid fitness media empire so marcus actually uh put uh put the analysis together on that so he called it but but i will uh i will take partial credit yeah. uh we uh and i will say i'm gonna go ahead and say this he had kent with the upset 
And I said, I don't think so. Um, I think it's, I think like, I think it's Hunter. And we went kind of back and forth. And uh, I was like, you called it, dude. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I know Hunter got hurt, but still he called Kent. And, and I said, I don't think you're, Hunter, I think Hunter's unbeatable. And, uh, and I was wrong. He, he and listen, again, I know he DNF, but like, you got to win to win. And he didn't. So, uh, right. so anyway, uh, look forward, look forward to more stuff from Marcus uh, and the amazing team here at hybrid fitness media, where you're going to find the yeah. hybrid happy hour, which by the way, couldn't believe no one owns it. We own it. So yay for us. I love that. I love it. Um, oh, where was I? Um, uh, well, the fact also that you did it, you did it here. So you're an American, yeah. you broke the record and it's on American soil. That's to yep. me the part that like, boom, stamp in the ground. We got to yeah. get power lift or 10,000 or somebody to get you guys some dope uniforms, right? Yes, we do. Some sweet uniforms. I'm sure, I'm sure we'll have a race kit, but yeah, it, it would be, we need like, we need like jackets. That's we what need I'm like, saying. We need like the warm up suit, you know, I, I love that. Like, I love that. Um, you know, I wore that American flag headband for the first championship and like I feel like it's kind of become my signature thing and I and I love it because I'm like yes representing like you know I don't know it's just fun so but no, yeah awesome. we need we need like swag you know we, we definitely need some team USA swag, swag. so get yeah. on that power lift and or 10,000 and or other American uh, sponsors of yeah hybrid, hybrid fitness um well cool i'm glad we got to hop on this on short notice um yeah do you want to tell people uh how they can get coached by you a world record holder yeah so there's a link in my bio rich ryan and i have put out two different programs a 12 and a 16 week program uh high rocks oriented um although it would definitely work for something like deca if you were more interested in that Rich also has a ton of other programs out there besides the like Meg Jacoby um, dual team up programs. So if you are interested, feel free to reach out, hit me in the DMs. Um, you know, we're happy to work with you guys. So yeah, and it, and it works. Just saying. Proofs in the work. pudding. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching till the end. We have so much great stuff on this feed. Also, be sure to follow the new Instagram feed, Hybrid Fitness Media, for all your latest High Rocks, DECA, Battle Bunker, Go Ruck Games, all that kind of fun stuff. Got a ton more content bringing you soon there. Love you, miss you, mean it. I have got to run.